Okay, I've been working on the RF amplifier stages for the transmitter. And I just want to show you what I have so far, how I did it. You know, the um, this this whole RF amplifier that, I, that I've taken is just, just right out of the BIDX40. I looked at Farhan's BIDX40 circuits and I like them a lot. Um, I've used them successfully and, and so I decided to build them here. But I took a little extra care in sort of laying out the, the amplifiers. Started out over here, where, let me get my pencil in the right spot, there we go. Over here, this this is the, the, the first stage, it's a 2N3904 right there. And I'm using one of the tri-filler um, toroidal cores that Farhan left me. And uh, I've just got it hooked up in the standard configuration. It's got a little pot here and the pot Trim pot lets you just control the amount of output going to the driver. So I, I, you could see that I marked out on the board with these lines the territory that I was going to be using for each part of the circuit, and I think that helps sort of when you're when you're especially when you're using Manhattan technique, it lets you just sort of plan out where everything is going to be. Um, and then the second stage is the driver, and I used a a 2N2219A, which I happen to have in the junk box, which is the same transistor that Farhan used in the BIDX40. Again, with one of the tri-filler cores that he gave me and just laid it out here. Now, I was real careful. I tried to keep the input of this stage um, far as far as possible from the output of this stage, so you discourage oscillations. And I put a little piece of coax here. Now, I left space so that if I want to, I could put some um, kind of PC board barrier between the stages, but so far that hasn't proved necessary because I fired it up and it, it didn't didn't oscillate on me, but <laughs> we'll see. So here is the IRF 510 and I've got sort of temporary uh, heat sink on it. I positioned it so that if I want to later on, I could use a larger heat heat sink, this heat sink here, and uh, I put it right there, and uh, I, I, it already had a tapped hole in it. See, so I positioned it so I could I don't have to go and tap another hole, and I could put this on there because I I might want to run this thing off of uh, 24 volts instead of the 12 volts, but I'll start out with 12 volts and we'll see how that how that goes. On the IRF 510, I kind of divided the space. You see, I've got a line here, and this is the, the gate circuit, and this is the drain circuit, okay? The gate circuit has a little 5-volt volt voltage regulator, goes through a pot, then goes through a 50-ohm um, a resistor, and this is really what sets the input impedance of this state, that 50-ohm that resistor. And on the output side, <clears throat> we have another tri-filler uh, toroid, but configured differently because it's basically stepping down the impedance. I think it needs about 12, 12 ohms here. And it, that's what this thing does. And it's got some an RF choke, a couple capacitors, a big electrolytic to stabilize the uh, the power there. And then the output circuitry. Now, I, I kind of built this module in a modular way. So I have this whole RF amplifier that I could possibly take out and use in another project. Um, we'll see how it goes. But then for the low pass filter, I built the low pass filters on a separate board. And uh, so here I have the um, uh, the 20 meter low pass filter and here I have the 75 meter low pass filter. And I have it switchable by one double pole, double throw relay here. I also have a TR relay here, a, trans, a TR relay here and a TR relay here that does all the kind of switching. I had to come up with kind of a plan on how they, how all the switching would work here. Let me change the, let me see if I can zoom in here, zoom out a little bit. You can see my plan. And there was a lot of, I just sort of drew things out and figured out where the relays would go, what were the normal connections, how they would have to be powered and how they would have to be have to be switched. So a little bit of what Pete would call noodling there to get everything sort of logical before I actually started melting solder. So that's where I am now. This will go on to the, uh, onto the pine board 
This will fit nicely here. Then we'll hook the whole thing up. Do, do a little bit of wiring to the relays, to the switches on the front panel. And uh, who knows, by the, uh, by the end of the day, I might actually have some, uh, some contacts made with this thing. But you never know, my amplifiers could turn out to be oscillators. It's happened before. Stay tuned. 7-3 from Northern Virginia.